Hi everyone, Gigabeef here. Today we're going to look at some M4 builds that are based around the flea market and worst case level 3 traders for what I think is a reasonable way to make an M4. Modding these guns is always pretty tough at lower levels, as you are so dependent on the flea market and the good parts always go for multiples of the trader prices. Even at level 2 traders, the items that you can actually buy are really not very good at all, giving barely any improvement over the stock parts, and because you can only add one or two mods, the end results really suck. Believe me, I tried. However, there are some bargains on the flea that we can utilise instead, so stick around and let's get going. Alright, so we're going to be mainly looking at making this beauty today, and modifications of it. This weapon is going to be our starting point, as it can be built entirely with level 3 traders, but there are alternative components that are either available at lower level traders or cheaply on the flea market, so you'll be able to make something of this weapon whether you have the trader levels or not. Here we can get to 59 ergo and 59 recoil for 85k for the base gun, excluding any mags or optics. When we look at the alternatives, depending exactly on what we buy, you can typically get to around 60 to 65 ish for both ergo and recoil, so it doesn't really vary much at this price point. Given the fluctuations in the value of items on the market itself, it's sometimes more art than science to create good weapon builds on a budget, so you have to use your judgement a bit when it comes to what looks to be decent comparative value at the time. This is what makes low level budget builds so difficult to put together. As soon as you rely on the flea market, you introduce a huge element of uncertainty as prices are changing all the time. One trick that can help in the latest wipe specifically is using the overall category search to look for good deals. Due to the latest find in raid system implemented for this wipe, the fact that people aren't able to continuously buy items that are undervalued on the flea and relist them anymore means you can find some good prices for certain items that have high drop rates in the game. Let's say for example you're looking for a muzzle break for a 556 weapon and you're over level 10 but you don't have any traders at high levels. What you can do is link search an ADAR barrel and click into the muzzles category and have a scroll down to see what you can find. Just remember when you do this to filter out barter trades as these are almost always players preying on people who use the system to list items far lower than they should because of Tarkov's strange internal pricing for barter items which is used by the flea market to determine the price ordering of the items. So really good M4 builds that I usually typically make revolve around a few things that we don't have access to. Firstly is the jailbreak as I discussed in another video but this relies on skier level 4 and gets pretty expensive due to the handguard. Next is the Alexander Arms Mark 10 handguard as this is the only other one that gives you minus 3% recoil which is actually on mechanic 3 but the guide itself is on mechanic 4 so stops you using a foregrip until then. This one I use on my routine builds normally. The VLTOR upper receiver, which is a peacekeeper level 4 item and gives minus 5% recoil. And finally the Daniels Defense Comp and Suppressor combo, which is the best in slot for 556 suppressors. Interestingly, the Daniels combo is actually available at level 3 mechanic, but it's extremely expensive at 60k for them together, which is nearly the price of our entire intended build. So we have to think of some alternatives. The M4DAR or ADAR conversion kit, as I like to think of it, is really a great place to start as it's much cheaper than a base M4. Yes, the barrel sucks in comparison, but do we really care about the minutes of angle for the accuracy of an M4 that's going for less than 100k? In my opinion, not really. Feel free to use a more accurate and better barrel for good builds, and start with the M4R for budget. Interestingly, because we're going to change most things about this weapon, we can effectively get to the base M4 for a very low cost. Firstly, we buy a rechargeable battery for 13 to 15k ish on the flea market, and use that to barter for an ADAR with skier level 1. Then we get an M4 lower from Mechanic 2, which are often quite cheap on the fleet also if needs be, and the pieces that we will be keeping are the ADAR barrel, the buffer tube, the upper receiver, and the charging handle, which means that we can sell everything else. This comes to 10.3k to Mechanic, which effectively means that we get the first four parts for between 3 to 5,000 rubles. This is super value! The M4 lower itself costs around 19.7k, and this is the base of the M4 DAR that we'll be using to buy the rest of our parts and adding them on afterwards. So far we've spent around 23 to 25,000. The base build for level 3 traders that we saw at the beginning uses the PWS muzzle from Skier 3, as at minus 10% recoil it's one of the best bang for your buck muzzle devices that you can buy at this level, as the bullet tech is 1% more reduction but at level 4 only. Before we can fit a handguard we'll be grabbing the cheapest low profile gas block which is the Mark 12 which is sold by both Mechanic 1 and Peacekeeper 2 which allows us to use a wide range of handguards. On handguards themselves, we can't buy any with 3% reduction at this stage as we discussed before without paying a fortune, and the RSAS version from Peacekeeper 3 is the only one with 2% recoil that we can buy from level 3 traders. You can also get the RAHG 4-inch guide from Mechanic 2 that allows us to attach a foregrip. 
On foregrips themselves, we'll be using the RK1 from Skier 3, as it gives minus 4% recoil reduction. This is a borderline item for me, as it's quite punchy at 17,000 for minus 4%. For our stock, the bus stock from Peacekeeper 3 actually has the best in-slot recoil, but just not quite as good as the HKE1 on Ergonomics, which is on level 4 Peacekeeper. Then for a pistol grip, the Hogue is good value and can be found on Peacekeeper 3 for 9 ergo. For a suppressed version, we can go for the KAC Compensator and the KAC QDSS from Peacekeeper. The KAC Comp is very cheap on the traders, but quite expensive on the flea market, however the suppressor is almost always cheaper on the flea despite costing a bunch from Peacekeeper. The issue with this combo is that it's relatively expensive for just suppressing the gun, which is all we're doing here really. Together they have 9% recoil reduction, which is worse than the PWS and costs more. 5 seconds before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. Alright let's carry on. But now you say, what if I don't have level 3 traders and we want to grab a few things off the flea market instead, or maybe just optimise the build with a few alternatives? Well the biggest blockers are the muzzle, the stock and the foregrip as these are typically the expensive parts when not bought off the traders directly. Handguards are actually pretty easy, as the RSAS one is normally going for less than the trader prices, and there's a few other choices for the equivalent of 2% recoil reduction as well. These are the URX 3.1, the LVOAC, and the Daniels Defence RAS 2. Depending on the day and the time, you can usually get one of these between 15 to 25,000, and they have slightly different ergonomics, with the base RSAS at 5, the URX at 6, Daniels at 7, and LVOA at 10. On muzzles, you can normally buy the PWS CQB fairly cheaply, as it's a high drop rate in game and is found on raiders as well. If we want to suppress, as mentioned the compensator part of the KAC is actually really expensive on the flea market. A much better choice that is potentially more flexible is one of the surefire compensators. There are three of these, with the FH556RC and the SF3P both providing 6% recoil reduction and the war comp giving 5% with the added bonus that the SF3P can be found on level 2 mechanic and the war comp on skier 2, so they're readily available early and for a super cheap price of 7 and 5,000. However, you can normally find one on the flea market as well for a decent price. On these, you can use any of the three surefire suppressors, however only one is really any good, which is the SOCOM 556RC2. It's probably the most expensive part on the flea market that we'll actually look at, and this can't be bought from traders at all, but given that it has a minus 7% recoil modifier, it's actually really good and normally costs about 30 to 35,000. Adding this onto the SF3P gives 13% overall, which is actually really close to the Daniels Defence combo for half the price. Moving on to stocks, the bus is normally really expensive on the flea market due to its best in slot recoil stat. An alternative is one of the MOE carbine stocks, combined with the butt pad, because there are so many different ones to choose from colour wise, there's usually one going for cheap if you don't mind a bit of a rainbow theme to your budget weapon. The biggest downside to this is that you need the butt pad really to make it good, and that accounts for 3% of the recoil reduction. These are usually 10 to 15,000 on the flea, so end up typically costing more than the stock itself. Ultimately, it's a judgement call as to whether these are trading cheaply enough to warrant buying them. Note you actually get 7 more ergo with this stock, so it's actually a real contender, with only 1% worse recoil than the bus, and it might be worth going for directly if you prefer to tweak the ergo up a little bit. A super cheap flea alternative is the UBR Gen 2. This isn't used very much because it attaches straight to the weapon and doesn't use the buffer tubes in game, which means it gets drastically outperformed by those that do when using the SI Advanced for later builds. However given that we're not upgrading the buffer tube in this build at all, as it's a level 4 mechanic part and is pricey on the flea, we only lose 1% from dropping the Colt buffer tube. Finally on foregrips, as I said before, the RK1 is a touch borderline as although it is very good with the minus 4% recoil, at 17k it's not an inconsequential portion of the overall build cost. There are a couple of other contenders like the RK0 or the RVG Black which are my normal go-to grips with 3% recoil reduction. This is an issue of price though, as they are still level 3 trader items. The next best one that you can buy from level 2 traders is the RK4 with 2% recoil reduction from Skier. If you're looking for a flea market only option, the Magpul AFG grips do always seem to go very cheaply on the flea market and are pretty much always available. These give a very specific minus 1.75% recoil and decent ergo at plus 8, so are not a terrible choice if your traders are low level. So now we have created loads of different ways to make a half decent M4 and here's a couple from the examples that we've made. A cheap but loud PWS build tends to sit between 60 and 65 for ergo and recoil depending on the precise attachments, and our original build costs around 85,000. We paid 25k to get the base weapon, which was the ADAR conversion kit and the M4 lower, and then we can check on the find parts to get an estimate of what the rest costs, so excluding those pieces, which is around 60k extra. If we switch over to the UBR and the RK4 for a real value build, 
we get a 65-65 gun with 25k base and 50k of additional mods for a total of 75,000. Our best build with the Surefire RC2 suppressor combo at around 30,000 gets to 25k of base plus 85k of mods for approximately 110k overall, which results in 54 ergo and 54 recoil. Without pushing into the level 4 attachments, this is about the best that we can do, partly because Tarkov's recoil system pushes players to add as many mods as possible due to the way that they add together to lower recoil. For the money, I think these 55 to 60 recoil weapons are pretty decent value and still have good ergo, especially if you go for the MOE carbine stocks. So remember to sub and hit the bell if you want to see more. You can also follow me on Twitter, and I stream on Twitch on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturday evenings UK time. Until then, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.